It's time for another reading vlog. Hi, my name is Jeanette and I want to thank you for joining me on the channel Jane Reads. So this is the start for another reading vlog. My prompt for April from my Christian Fiction Reading Challenge is a new to me author. So I posted a video in March, I will link that video below, of some recommendations for like who I have discovered as new to me authors in the last couple of years and some authors that have yet to read that I really want to read that I either own books from or I'm very interested in. So I am going to vlog my experience with the plan is to three books from three different authors that I have never read from. So I went to the local library and I will insert a clip here. And as you see, I picked up a couple books. And so when I played my April TBR game, two books from two new to me authors came on the, on the list. The first one was Dear Henry, Love Edith by Becca Kisner. Now I do own this one on my Kindle, but I really wanted to check out this library we went to and they had this one in stock. And I really, if I'm doing a reading vlog, I'd rather have the physical book to hold. Just makes it easier to show you where I am, how I'm progressing and yeah. So I decided to pick this one up. Then when I was kind of browsing the shelves, you'll see that the other one I found was Fragments of Fear by Carrie Stewart Parks. Now this one was not on my April TBR, but, and again, I own this on my Kindle. However, Carrie Stewart Parks is the one author I did mention that was a new to me author I've never read from, that back when I did a video, April, May, 2022, she was on the list of one of the new authors I wanted to try. She is the only author on that list I still have not read from. And I was like, no, I saw this one at the library. I'm like, okay, that's a sign. I need to read it. So I'm, so these are the two that I picked up at the library. Then I have this one did end up on my April TBR as the Goodreads random choice. And this is Beyond the Moment by Tamara Alexander. However, I discovered that this is book two of the Timber Ridge Reflections series, and I don't own book number one. So I have requested book number one from the library, but it hasn't come in yet. So once it comes in, then I'll be reading it. I do also have this one on audio, but I really want to be able to read it kind of in between listening to the audio. Otherwise, if I just listen to audio, it's gonna take me a while to do. I'm slow at audio. <laughs> so yeah. So I'm going to hold off on the Tamara Alexander book for now. And I'm going to start with one of these. So I thought what I'll do is I'll read the first sentence of each one and kind of see which one pulls me in and which one do I want to start with. Now I do have Dear Henry on audio so I could listen to an audio and physically read it. So I should be able to get through it much quicker that way. And I'm a little kind of, I'm not sure what to think about this going into it because this is what came up for my lowest rated on Goodreads. And I've heard people really, like I know people that have really enjoyed this story, but then I also know a couple people that did not and somebody that DNF'd it. And so I'm like, hmm, where am I gonna be on this scale? But I've heard like, you've got male kind of vibes. Um, so I really enjoyed that movie. So we'll, we'll see. Notes, I'm, I have high hopes for it, but we will see. And then this one is the, I have a few Carrie Stewart Parks books, but this is the one that I decided to start with because one is a standalone and it's the one that is kind of the most recommended of the ones that I own. So let's start with the first sentence of each of them and see which one pulls me in, which one do I want to start reading? Okay, so the first sentence, Evelyn Young, can't even say her name, Evelyn Yvonne McTavish, Tavish to her friends, clenched the red long-stemmed rose and stared at the glossy casket. 
Okay, so she's holding a cat rose and standing in front of a casket. Why? What is happening? Okay, then, dear Henry, first sentence is, Henry grimaced, not sure which irritated him more, the persistent ache in his knee or the relentless voice in his ear. Okay, so he's in pain, both physically and verbally frustrated, annoyed. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Okay, so neither one of those sentences really give me much to go on. What I'm thinking is just holding them like this, this one definitely feels thinner than this one. Um, this one is, is that really? Nope, that's an expert, excerpt. Okay, so this one is 313 pages. Oh, this one is definitely longer. 360 pages. So, I mean, I can just tell also feeling them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start with this one because it is not on my April TBR. So if I'm gonna like verge from my TBR at the very beginning, I might as well just start right at the very beginning. And then once I finish them, then I can start with my April TBR and kind of follow the rest of my April TBR. That is my mindset anyways, we'll see. So I'm gonna start with this one. So it's uh, like mystery suspense. I don't know, it doesn't have a genre category on the bottom. Um, is there gonna be a romance in it? I have no idea. And I can't even read the tagline because the library stickers over the tagline. All I can read is stolen art, archeological dig, an abandoned dog, and a secret that's worth killing for. Yeah, but I don't know what's in between stolen art and the dig. <laughs> so yeah, okay. I will check back in once I read a bit and see how I'm feeling about Carrie Stewart Park's writing and this story in particular. I have made it to halfway I basically read all this yesterday and have this to go. I don't know, I'm on page 140 of 300, so I'm almost halfway, not quite. Um, but I am really enjoying it and I'm really invested in the story. And it is quick paced and I just feel like I'm flying through the book. And I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So when the opening sentence was Evelyn was holding a rose at a casket. And so within that first chapter, we learned that her fiance had died and the police ruled it a suicide. She suspected murder and it kind of, and then things are revealed a little bit during that funeral that kind of did Evelyn know him as well as she thought she knew him. And so then it jumps three weeks ahead in time and she gets a phone call saying, we have your dog. And she's like, I don't have a dog. And they say, well, the microchip said it was your name and your phone number. So she goes to retrieve the dog, recognizes the dog, goes to take it to the proper owner to kind of find out why is her name registered on the microchip. And she gets to the house and finds a body. So kind of things kind of, build off of there. She goes to report it. The police can't like verify what she's reporting. So it leaves her kind of questioning what is going on. Everything seems to be against her. She believes she believes she saw one thing and then the police can't find any evidence of that. But it is very evident that somebody is after her and trying to like kind of really throw her off and something. Does it connect to the dead fiance? I don't know yet. We'll see, but I am very invested in the story and I'm really enjoying following it. There is a second point of view. We have met a guy who I'm assuming is going to be a possible romantic interest, but we also get the point of view from him at times. And when it switches between her point of view and his point of view, it kind of goes back a little bit. Like we're not, it kind of goes back to his side of what that interaction that just happened 
as well as her side like it doesn't just pick up and then switch to his which I really enjoy because he reacted one way during something and she from her point of view she took it as something like not a positive interaction and then he kind of we relive it through his point of view and he's like that was so stupid of me kind of in a way he doesn't say those exact words but so it's kind of nice to know that he wasn't meaning to come across that way. So I'm really liking the switching of the point of views and the fact that it kind of duplicates a bit, not the whole scene, but just a little bit of it or kind of recaps a bit from the other person's point of view when it does switch. So I'm really enjoying that. So I'm going to keep reading and then I will check in when I finish to let you know kind of where I'm sitting with this book. I finished this last night. It is now the next day. I've just got home from work and I really enjoyed it. I was fully invested in the story and the characters, the, the one character for sure, the Tavish that we're following, the female, and very like, what is going on? And then there is a twist revealed that I had not seen coming at all. And when it was revealed, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> right? And I just, I should have, I should have suspected. I probably should have, but I didn't. Which I'm kind of glad, like, that she could write that way to make me kind of throw me off and not suspect, right? So, yeah, I really enjoyed this. There is a little bit of romance, but not a ton of it. I don't even, I can't even remember like an actual kissing scene. There's a kiss on the hand, I think, if I remember correctly, but that's it. Like, the only thing is they do say I love you very early. Well, very early, not early in the book, like in a relationship. So it felt very insta-love because they hardly know each other from what we saw. But I still really enjoyed it. And it continued the two POVs back and forth with a little recap of his point of view of that, what happened, and her point of view. Like, I really enjoyed that. Even if it is a little bit of a repeat, I really enjoyed it. The complaint that I have about this book, which has been a very common complaint in my last few reads, is we kind of wrap up the main case of the story or the main gist of the story and then all of a sudden it jumps in a period of time and we're like, whoa, what? Ha and then we're just giving a summary of what happened in that time. And I'm hoping in that like jump period chapter that it tells me what happened to kind of where it ended before that time jump. It did tell me, but I'm like, just as soon as I saw like that it's you know so much later I was like oh really <laughs> like don't leave me hanging and then like hope that you tell me in that summary recap of what just happened but yeah <laughs> that's I should know to expect that because the last I want to say last four books I've read have been like that and I think a lot of books are probably like that especially if it's an epilogue but this was not an epilogue. This was part of the book, part of the main book, right? So yeah, that's my only complaint. However, I was fully invested in the story and I was along for the ride. And I will definitely be picking up more by this author, which is good because I own a few more. <laughs> so yes, okay, so that is my experience with that, with Carrie Stewart Parks. They I'll probably end on four stars. Um, there is a little bit of faith in it, learning to trust, um, especially Proverbs 3, 5. And yeah, I just really enjoyed that, but it's not a ton. Like there's a little bit of focus, but not a lot. So yeah, just know that. Okay, then I am going to start Dear Henry, Love Edith by Becca Kisner. Now, I, my best friend just read this like very recently when she knew that it was going to be on my TBR because she wanted to read it before I read it <laughs> so that when I do the video, she's not spoiled for it. And so, yeah, and all she has told me 
she asked me how long the book was because she listened to it on audio. She asked me how long the book was because it felt like a novella. And I told her and she was like, wow, like it read really quickly. So we will see what my experience is. And other than that, the only other thing she told me is, I want to talk to you about it when you're done reading it. Okay. So I guess she has some thoughts is my guess, or she's expecting me to have some thoughts. We'll see, but I'm going to leave this spoiler free as much as I can. I know that a lot of people have already read this and I know people that have really, really enjoyed it. And I know a couple people that did not like it and even DNF'd it. So we'll see where I sit. I can tell you most likely, unless I'm really hating it, I'm not gonna DNF it because I don't DNF books very, very often. I have to really be mad <laughs> to do it. <laughs> um, something is like inappropriate in it or like a lot of language in it or I'm just really struggling to read it. I don't expect that with this book because it is published by Tyndale Fiction. So it's a Christian fiction. So I am not expecting it to have the two problems that it, nor, books normally have if I'm going to DNF them. So we will see how this goes. I do know flipping through it, and I mean, even kind of from the cover, right, and from the little back description, that there will be some letters exchanged in it, and I really enjoy letters, reading letters, yeah. So this is what I'm going to start today, and we will see how it goes. This is kind of an unusual week at work this week, so I'm going to try to take you tomorrow. We have a concert. Um, we have a special choir coming in and t putting a concert on, so I'm going to try to take you and it kind of depends where I am, <laughs> if I can get some video or not. Um, yeah, and then I have to work Saturday morning, but you know, that's, it's what, once, twice a year, maybe, so I, I can deal with it. Plus, Andrew will be working anyways, so yeah, okay. So this is going to be the one I'm reading and I am still waiting for my library hold on the other book. So hopefully by the time I finish this one, it will be in. But if it reads really quickly, that might be pushing it. Maybe I'll get a notification tomorrow it's there. I don't know. We'll see. I will check back in when I am a bit, well, a bit further. I've read the first sentence. I'm not very far. I will check back in when I'm about halfway through and let you know what I'm thinking so far. Okay, I have found a favorite spot to film when Andrew's not home. <laughs> so it is before work today. I had to go in a bit later, so I had some time this morning. And I have an update. I have made it over halfway through now. And... I have such mixed feelings about this, such mixed feelings. There's times it's really funny, like some of the scenes that the characters get themselves into, but other times it's like, um, yeah, let's talk and like figure things out. And the thought of these two people living together on the main floor and the upstairs, but they've never met. If you had somebody moving into your house, wouldn't you arrange a meeting with them at one point, like before they actually move in or like within them, days within them moving in, just to talk, right? And it's not that they have completely like busy, busy schedules because they've run into each other over like through town and stuff. And it's like, I think they could have scheduled a meeting because I'd be really uncomfortable moving into somebody's house and never meeting the house owner. Or on the other side, owning a house, living in it by myself, and then having somebody live in it, like move in, and I've never met them. I, I don't know, that just, that really bothers me. And then kind of once they realize that the other person is not who they think they are, like Henry is not an old man and Edith's not an old lady, they're actually both the same age and they realize who each other are, right? 
without like one realizes before the other one realizes but they don't tell each other <sighs> yeah uh, yeah <laughs> there's just there's a lot of problems with this these people's choices <laughs> and thoughts and then just some of the like they try to explain something and nobody listens like this community is whacked <laughs> like just wacky and yeah so I am gonna finish it though I have as I said I have just under halfway I'm on chapter 23 so 206 and I think there's 360 maybe somewhere around there so I mean I will finish it to see what's going oh the other thing is because like one of them found out who the other one was before the other one found out they lied to them about who they were and kind of and it was like and Henry is in a relationship with somebody else, but yet he's thinking about Edith and acting on feelings for Edith. And it's like, um, yeah. Now, I mean, they did say like they were taking a break and being apart for a while, but all I can think of is the friends thing. We were on a break. Were they really, could they? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's it for now. I'm going to head into work and then I will check back in later when I finish the book. Last night we went and saw the Watoto's Children's Choir and they are from Uganda and they're basically orphaned kids that have been taken in by the Watoto Church and then they, like, just the story is amazing. The church started in 1984 by a couple and they had 75 people when they started. Today, it is 35,000 strong in Uganda. And then they are on a six month tour across Canada, the group that we saw. They are the 112th choir group that they've had with this church. And from what I learned this morning after like talking to some of the host families that hosted them, that the it's a once in a lifetime experience for the kids they come they're part of the choir for one like choir session and then it's you know opened up to new kids the next time like different kids the next time and the leaders do can reapply to do it again but and there are like repeat leaders at times but very rare as well and one of the kids or one of the leaders that spoke last night was a kid he joined with Toto when he was six years old when he lost both his parents and now he's come up, grown up and he is now one of the hosts for this or one of the leaders for this touring group and he also works on the marketing and communication so he put together the video presentation for the concert as well and really really interesting to learn and just it's heartbreaking the stories of them so I did take some video not a lot because again we were sitting you know not in the front row so there was people in front of us and heads blocking our view at times so I will insert some of the clips that we did get just to get you an idea of what it's like talking to somebody afterwards and she was saying like her and her husband were in children's choirs growing up but they were in a white children's choir compared to this from Uganda and just yeah and if you've ever like know the children's choir where they stand there and sing right that's a white children's choir and yeah just not stiff at all very very energetic it was a really good evening. But then 
came home. And so for the remainder of the evening, I finished this book. Dear Henry, Love Edith by Becca Kisner. Kinsner? I'm not sure. Anyways, I totally get why there is such mixed ratings on Goodreads between low ratings and really high ratings. It is supposed to be a Christian fiction published by Tyndale and this is Becca's debut novel and I, yeah, I am not shocked in a way that it came up as my lowest rated on Goodreads now. I'd only heard the praise for it. I hadn't looked at any of the low ratings when it came up as my lowest rated. And then once I finished it, then I was reading through some of the ratings. I'm like, mm, yeah, I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. And I just, I will admit, there are some really funny, funny moments throughout this. I will admit, just you start saying something and a community member like, oh, great, and then goes off onto their own little tangent. It doesn't hear what you're saying or doesn't let you finish what you're saying. And so misunderstandings happen and the whole thing, right? Some of that was really funny. However, I have two big problems with this book. And I've already mentioned one in my mid, mid book check-in, <laughs> what do I call that? Was that they never agreed to meet before she moved in or even like shortly after they moved in. Then my second problem with it is once Henry knows who she is, he lies to her about who he is and continues with that lie. And then he starts kissing her and having feelings for her when he's dating somebody else. And yes, he's thought about, you know, he should break off with his current girlfriend, but he hasn't. Yeah. Yeah, and then later on she finds out who he is, but she doesn't tell him either that she knows. And just the lying that happens, not, not a fan, not a fan. There is not a lot of faith in this book well, you know, there's a few little mentions of it, but not a lot. And then the fact that Henry doesn't even correct, like, the the townspeople's impression of what is happening, and what's going on, and just allows things. And even one time he kind of just, like, yeah, I'll let them think that, right? Like, and I'm just like, eh, yeah, no, no. Yeah, I just, I could not root for the relationship because of the lie. And I mean, even at the very beginning of just, you're gonna, like, as a single female woman, you're gonna move into this guy's house and not even meet him. I don't care if you think he's an old man. I still would wanna meet him. And on the guy's side, I would want to meet who's moving into my house. Yeah, I, yeah. Now, they do not live together the whole summer. It takes place over the course of a summer. She eventually does move out and they kind of get to know each other better th through those. But I still, and then there's scenes in it that just like, there is fluff added. Like there is a pepper scene that lasts forever, it seemed. Like it was so much longer than it, would, it needed to be. Personal opinion. So I gave this one two stars, not, it not for me. And really, yeah, as I said, like it is funny at times. Like, yes, the pepper scene is long and yes, it's funny, but I still, I could not get on board for the characters and get behind the lying that happened and the cheating basically on a current girlfriend, like on a current relationship. Yeah, so not for me. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to From a Distance by Tamara Alexander. I do not have a physical copy of this book yet. I have requested it from the library, but it has not come in yet. However, 
I have found an ebook and an audio version. So I most likely won't listen to audio for it. I'll probably just read the ebook. But so here's the cover. This is book one of the Timber Reflections. Timber Ridge Reflections series. So when I did my April TBR game, I came, one of the prompts was a Goodreads random pick. So when I randomized my Goodreads TBR of books I owned, the book that came up was Beyond This Moment, which is book two in the series. So I said that I would read book one if I could get my hands on it. And now I've been able to get my hands on it in an ebook form. So what is this book about? I don't really know, actually. <laughs> um, it says, what happens when the realization of a dream isn't what you imagined and the secret you've spent a lifetime guarding is finally laid bare? Determined to become one of the country's premier newspaper photographers, Elizabeth Westbrook travels to the Colorado Territory to capture the grandeur of the mountains surrounding the remote town of Timber Ridge. She hopes, too, that in the cool, dry air of Colorado, and its renowned hot springs will cure the mysterious illness that threatens her career and her life. So all I really know is it is a historical fiction. And that's, I, there is a second paragraph that talks about him. I know his name's Daniel because it's the first word in the second paragraph, but I'm not gonna read the rest because I wanna go into this fairly blind. So this is the book that I'm gonna be starting now. I will check in later to let you know how it's going. And then at the end, once I finish the book and wrap up this vlog. Okay, very quick update for the vlog is I got a physical copy. My, it's really sun bleach though on the side. But my library hold came in. So now I have officially started this and I am three chapters in. I ended on chapter four. I listened to one chapter on audio and I've read one chapter. No, I listened to two on audio and I've read one chapter. And it wasn't going well last night when I started it, but I was also really tired when I started and I probably, which is why I switched to audio for a little bit because I just wasn't understanding what was happening. But I think that's totally on me. I don't think that's the author. I was just feeling really tired yesterday. So I'm going to try to read a little bit more today and keep progressing through and see how it's going. So I just wanted to update that I now have the physical book. I am checking in on this book, From a Distance by Tamara Alexander. And I don't know, I'm about, as you can see, I'm just over halfway. I'm on 224 of 370. 380. So I am just over halfway. And I don't know if I'm going to continue or not at this point in time. I thought I'd made a decision yesterday. But then I started listening to the audiobook this morning as I was getting ready for work again. And I'm like, well, if I do it on audio, I think I'll be okay. Which is very unusual for me because normally audio is like, not my I'd rather sit down and read it. However, we are, as I said, I am over halfway. I mean, yesterday I was at 49%, I think. I've read a few more chapters today. And I'm just, I'm bored with the story. And I don't like the character of Elizabeth. She is lying to everybody about why she has come to Colorado, why she's here. And she does not need to be lying. She is not undercover or anything, and there's no reason for the lie. She is also lying to her father. She has led her father to believe that she has come out west to Colorado from Washington to be a teacher. And so he sends school supplies and stuff. But that's not what she's doing. But she doesn't admit to him. So that is bothering me. And then she's also, this is late 1800s. And she feels she's early 30s and feels like she should be treated exactly like a man and starts like acting like a, like wants to shake hands like a man, wants to be in a man's profession, which I totally get. Like I can be with that. 
However, the way that she comes about it and talks down to people at times, it's just really frustrating. And then there's a couple other things that are going on or just like references. And I realize it's to the time period, but it's also like every time I read it, it's like, hmm, it just bugs me because there is a certain reference to darker skinned people that really became inappropriate or unacceptable to use in the late 1960s, early 1970s. And like, if we were to say it now, like reference to somebody now about it, like it, it would be totally frowned upon, frowned upon. And that term is used a number of times throughout. And each time I read it, it's just, it just rubs me the wrong way. But I mean, I know that like back in the 1870s, like prior to 1900, it, you know, it was widely used in reference to the darker skinned people and slaves and things like that, right? And so I get it, but it's still, I don't need to read it. Then there is at one point, I'm going to try to find it. And I just, I don't know. I asked, I read this section to my husband and asked him, what do you think? Would this be considered using Jesus name? Oh, like wrongly or like, you know, is it okay? Kind of thing. Like, am I taking this wrong? And he said, well, it could, you know, kind of be one way or the other, right? Like it could have seen as yes, they are, but then other ways, maybe not so much. So basically, Elizabeth and her, the guy that she's hired as kind of an assistant, it has arrived back to a room and discovered that the room has been vandalized. And so as they open the door, the assistant declares, Oh, sweet Jesus, his, what happened here? And I'm just like... I, like, I get it, but I'm also, hmm, I don't know if I, I'm comfortable with that. So that's when yesterday, as I was reading it, um, I got to that part and I'm like, it was almost like the last straw, but it's also not the last straw because I've continued since then. <laughs> so yesterday I did put it down for a while. And then I picked up this one, Calculated Revenge by Jill Elizabeth Nelson. So this is not a new to me author. This is actually a reread for me that was on my priority rereads. And I read this yesterday. And I was just fully invested in the story and I read it and I'm done. I will talk about it in my wrap up, but it's not a new author. So other than mentioning that I have read it in between the new authors, that's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> and so then this morning, so at that point in time, when I picked this one up, I thought for sure I'm going to DNF this book. And I'm kind of, I'm on the fence about that because I have only DNF'd a, like a handful of books and one primary because of language, maybe two because of language and the third one was just again language but more of the classic type of language that I just did not understand what I was reading and could not get into the story not because of filthy language in the other ones but then this morning I wanted to listen to an audiobook as I was getting ready so I thought well I'll try the audiobook again for this one so I started, I picked up the audiobook where I was. Now I have an issue because my audible audiobook, the chapters don't line up. So it was really hard to find where I was for one thing, <laughs> but I've now figured out where I was and I started listening to it again. And I'm like, okay, if I listen to it, I can get through this book, but should I be doing that? Like if I'm reading it and really bored and just don't care or annoyed about the character, do I keep going? So that's, that's where I'm at at this point in time when I'm filming this wrap up, like this thought section. So I'm going to try, 
I am on chapter 25. I'm going to try reading another five chapters. Do I, I'll read to chapter 30. That's only 24. That's only 50 more pages. So I'm going to try to read another 50 pages tonight. And then I will make a decision if, okay, if I can't get into it and I'm still feeling the same thing about it, then I'm going to put it down. I mean, then I only have that left, but we'll see. That is my thought right now. Yeah. I've just, I spent, I have spent so much time on this first section of the book that if I put it down now, it almost feels like wasted time that I really could have been, I mean, I read this one yesterday, right? Like I could be moving further on to my TBR, but this is also a book on my TBR that I'd like to mark off as done. Yeah, I am so like undecided at this point in time. So as I said, I'm going to read another 50 pages and then I will let you know what I'm going to do. Okay, so I have made it to chapter 30, as I said, and I'm going to make a decision. And I have decided, I mean, I have 100 pages left. Like, yeah, 100 pages left. And if I keep, like, combo listening and reading... I'm getting more invested in the story with listening to it, which is really shocking me because that's not normally how it works for me, <laughs> but it's definitely helping me. And I think it's just, I don't know, it's just helping it move quicker maybe, but I don't think that's it either. I don't know. So all Elizabeth's secrets have been revealed, or at least I think all of her secrets have been revealed. And now we are kind of on a journey to see what happens next. There is a bit of romance happening, but I'm not really on board for it a bit because it's very appearance based. And yeah. Oh, one other thing I mentioned. Elizabeth is a redhead. So that will fulfill my redheaded challenge, like the prompt for Chantel's Read Your Bookshelf challenge for April. And I think that's another reason why I want to keep reading because I need to finish a book with the redhead for that challenge. I don't want to put a DNF book in for that prompt, right? I don't even know if I can actually. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so I'm kind of like, oh, okay, well, and now I mean at this point, I'm 100 pages in. I might as well finish it. I've invested this much. Let's finish this much. So I am going to keep reading and hope. I'm really hopeful it gets better and kind of Elizabeth, like, learns from her actions. We'll see. So I have finished this book. And has been my common complaint in a lot of books I've read recently. We have a pivotal scene happen. And then the next chapter, like it kind of ends on a cliffhanger, like a pivotal scene happens. Then the next chapter picks up a month later and kind of recaps what happened after, like at that pivotal moment, what happened immediately after that and kind of what's happened in the month since. And then we have the epilogue that happens approximately six months after that scene. And I'm kind of like, I want to know in the moment what happens. Like, I just, I want to see, I don't want to say what I want to see because that'll give spoilers of what the pivotal scene is. But like, I want to know the immediate reaction after it. Not kind of a recap a month later. Yeah. So other than that, I mean, that's a very common. I am still on two stars for this book. I was really bored through some of it, like, well, through majority of it. And I just 
didn't really care about the characters that much because Elizabeth is lying a lot of the way through the book. A lot of the way. And the guy character is also keeping some things from Elizabeth, but then he does open up and tell her, but she still doesn't really... Her secrets are only told kind of by somebody else. It's announced and then she has to own up to it. And then she, like, as I said before, she is lying to her father and we don't see her like come clean with her father or any of that. We just know that things are okay with them now. And yeah, yeah, not a, not a fan. So I do own this. I got book one from the library. I do own book two, but I honestly, I don't really have any plans to read it. But as I said to my best friend when I was talking to the other night, that I'm probably going to keep it on my shelves so that if an unhaul prompt comes up, I could just, oh, okay, I'm going to unhaul this one. Now that's kind of cheating, isn't it? <laughs> because I already know that I don't really plan to read it. And if I keep it on my TBR and then I have like a random prompt come up again where it just randomly books, picks a book on my TBR, what are the chances it would pick that one again? So I think, I think I have to pull it from my shelves. But yeah, okay. So the new authors that I read in this vlog are Tamara Alexander, Carrie Stewart Parks, and Becca Kisner. And yeah, I didn't have a great experience. So as I, s I put them in the wrong order. As I said, this was a two stars for me. This was a two stars for me. And this was a four stars. So out of these three, the one that I'm like, it's happy that was a win for me is definitely Carrie Stewart Parks because this is also the one, the author that I own the most books by. Whereas these two, I only own, I only own this book in Kindle. This is a library edition. I only own this book by her. I do not have her second book. This book, as I said, I have book number two, but I'm going to unhaul it, but I don't own any other books. And Carrie Stewart Parks, I own one, two, three. I own three other books by her. Maybe even one of my can. I own three for sure. I feel like I might own another one on my Kindle because this one again is also on my Kindle, um, but I got it from the library. But yeah, so thankfully she is a win. So that was my experience with new authors. And just because this was my experience with these books and these authors, doesn't mean you will have the same. I'm just, yeah, I have my own opinions, right? So yes, so I will definitely read more by this author. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I hope you enjoyed and I'd love to know if you've read a new author recently and who it was and did you enjoy the book. Let's chat in the comments below. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.